How's it going guys? So in a couple of weeks time we have a, a very interesting heavyweight contest coming up between two former heavyweight champions. Uh, former WBA champion Alexander Povetkin is going to be taking on former WBC champion Bermain Stavern. Uh This is a, a much anticipated fight. Obviously there's been um, a lot of delays in regards to Povetkin and his next fight. He was supposed to fight Deontay Wilder earlier this year as we all know. And uh, that fight fell through because of the drugs testing. This is going to be a good fight. It's going to be a very good fight. And uh, I can't wait for this fight. I, th I think it's going to be very entertaining while it lasts. Uh, both of these guys are knockout punchers. Both of these guys are very explosive. You know, both of them are... B both of them are in a good place in their career right now because the winner of this fight has a lot to a lot to gain because the winner of this fight is going to be the WBC interim champion and that will put the, the winner of this fight in a guaranteed position to fight for the world title. So uh, if Deontay Wilder, say uh, say um, Alexander Povetkin wins this fight, if Deontay Wilder then decides not to fight Alexander Povetkin, the WBC at this stage, after all that's gone on, they have no choice but to take that belt off Wilder and uh, give it to Povetkin. So that, that is assuming Povetkin wins this fight. Obviously, if Stavern wins this fight, we could be seeing a rematch between Wilder and Stavern. Personally, I don't really want to see that because um, I don't think there was any controversy in the first fight. I think uh, in the first fight, you know, I remember I, I predicted that fight spot on. I said that Deontay Wilder was going to be able to handily outbox him from the outside because... Bermain Stavern really didn't have the foot speed to really to really close the distance and land anything significant on Wilder consistently enough to win the fight, and I suspected that would be the case. Um, I didn't have a YouTube channel back then. I used to make all my predictions on Facebook and stuff, and yeah, the the fight went how I expected it to go. You know, I knew that Stavern just didn't have the attributes to compete with Wilder, and uh, yeah, I, I think that stylistically though. Stavern has a better chance stylistically against Povetkin than he would against um, against Wilder. And there's a reason for that. It's because Povetkin is uh, a similar height to Stavern. I believe Stavern is slightly taller. Stavern also has a reach advantage. And Povetkin is the kind of fighter who comes forward and takes the initiative. So, uh, you know, there's going to be more opportunities for Stavern to land with full force against Povetkin than there was against Wilder, who was being very cagey on the outside and trying to utilise his reach. And also Wilder had much better footwork than, than Stavern does. You know, Wilder doesn't have great footwork himself, but Stavern's feet are very slow and, and you know, he, he really doesn't move well on his feet. So, you know, and, and that, that would that would bode well for Wilder in that fight. Now, um, I don't think that's going to be an issue here because Povetkin isn't going to have a, a hard time... Sorry, Stavern isn't going to have a hard time finding Povetkin. You know, he's not going to have to use his movement in this fight. Alexander Povetkin is going to be right in his face, okay, he's going to be coming forward, Alexander Povetkin is a very front foot heavy fighter, okay, when he fights on the back foot, it's usually when he's trying to set up a, a front foot attack, it's like when he's taking a little step back and, and having a break and surveying the situation, then he, he comes inside and he really looks to do damage up close, you know, that, that's what Povetkin is, he's a fighter that does damage up close, he's an inside fighter, he's a pressure fighter, likes to fight coming forward, um, and he's been very successful with that style. Now, I've seen Povetkin have tons of problems in his career with guys who take a step back and who, you know, try and take advantage of that come forward motion. For example, when Alexander Povetkin fought Eddie Chambers, that was a very tough fight for Povetkin. Now, I'll agree that Povetkin did win the fight clearly, and he was certainly the better boxer. And, you know, it was it was interesting because Povetkin had only had about 13 fights at that point, and uh, Chambers was a veteran at that point. Chambers had had 30 professional fights and he was undefeated. So, I mean, that was a guy that was 30 and 0 fighting a guy that, as a professional, was relatively inexperienced. So it was impressive that that, that Povetkin was able to win that fight. But I still saw several flaws in that fight. Now, Eddie Chambers is a very small heavyweight and he's not a puncher. And, uh, you know, he was able to land a lot of clean punches on... Um, he was able to land a lot of clean punches on Povetkin in that fight just, just by taking a step back and every time Povetkin came forward, you know, letting his hands go and, and catching him with counters. And he actually did boss Povetkin's face up a little bit. Uh, also, the uh, the Marco Hook fight is a, is a fight where Povetkin took a lot of damage and it was a similar situation. You know, Povetkin would be on the inside, ducking low, trying to work the body and trying to outbox 
uh, Marco Hook from the inside. And then Marco Hook would just take a step back and he would throw a right hand over the top and he was really chopping Povetkin down in that fight. And I actually, I thought that Marco Hook won that fight personally. I had him a few rounds ahead. Uh, the fight, was it was close. I watched it live. Uh, it was close, but I personally had Marco Hook winning. Um, you know, it, it was just one of them fights. That I just thought that, I just thought that going down the stretch, he had the more success. He certainly landed the more eye-catching punches, the more telling punches, and he did the more damage. And, and I think it was a good performance from Hook. Now, um, Povetkin has improved since. He certainly has improved his conditioning. Uh, I know that going into that Hook fight, he was having problems with his stamina because he, he really wasn't training that hard. So perhaps that was the reason why Povetkin... Povetkin had problems in that fight was because he wasn't in the best of condition. You know, that's always a possibility. And uh, also, you know, he had a lot of chub on his body, so there was a lot of excess weight there. And I think that that could have been a liability for him in the fight, which obviously tied him out quicker. And, I mean, in recent years and, like, in the past two years or so, Povetkin has been in much better shape. Uh, he, You know, he's been far more impressive. He's been able to maintain his stamina throughout the distance. Um, I think he, he, he woke up a lot after the Vladimir Klitschko fight because for the Vladimir Klitschko fight, you know, he... Vladimir Klitschko um, really took Povetkin to a place he'd never been before. I mean, Klitschko was leaning on his back, was pushing him, he was throwing him around the ring. You know, he was he was leaning all his weight down on Povetkin and just wearing Povetkin down, wearing him out. And Povetkin, you know, really was just. Oh, I mean, I would have hated to be Povetkin in that fight. He he probably needed chiropractic care after that fight for his back. I mean, he could have had some spinal injury because having a two hundred and forty five pound man jumping on your back and leaning on you for for 12 rounds it's it's I, I gotta imagine it can't be a very pleasant experience so you know that that was obviously a, a good learning curve I guess for Povetkin you know he knows not to fall into that trap again but um yeah you know he, he seemed to be improved a lot since that fight he, he obviously has been doing a lot of weightlifting and a lot of resistance training so he looks a lot more muscular and a lot more strong whereas before the Vladimir Klitschko fight and during that fight, he, you know, he looked kind of like a, you know, a fleshy, you know, just a big bulky guy, but really not that much definition on him. But now, you know, he's, he's improved a lot. I've seen some training footage of him for this fight. I've seen him doing chin-ups and whatnot, and he looks very impressive. Um, you know, he, he looks, he, he certainly looks as if he's been doing a lot of resistance training. And I think that that's the kind of thing that Povetkin needs to do, because, you know, if you're a short heavyweight, and you're going to be fighting guys that are so much bigger and so much taller and heavier and longer than you, you're going to need to be able to dig very deep in order to get the win most of the time. So I think that resistance training and, you know, um, bulking up a bit is something Povetkin certainly needed. Now, um, going into this fight, this fight against um, uh, Bermain Stavern, one thing Povetkin is going to have to do in this fight is he's going to have to be very wary for that right hand, okay, because Bermain Stavern, he throws a, you know, kind of a speculative jab, which is kind of more like a pushing jab, you know, he kind of pushes it into your face, there's not really much snap behind it, and then he throws a beautiful straight right hand, okay, that straight right hand that, that Bermain Stavern throws is a very effective punch, just ask Chris Ariola. you know, it causes him a lot of problems, and uh, I think that I think that Povetkin's going to have to watch for that coming forward. Like I said, Marco Hook gave gave Povetkin a lot of problems with a straight right and a right hand over the top. So he's going to have to watch for that. He's going to have to be very careful. But as long as he is careful and as long as he applies calculated pressure and as long as he focuses on the body early on, because Stavern is not a great athlete and, and he looks flabby around the midsection with him not being a great athlete. So I think that Povetkin could really takes Stavern out to the body. I think if Povetkin works the body from the first round, I could see him getting a late stoppage here. You know, if he, if he if he really digs in that left hook to the body, like he did to Marius Wok in the early rounds of that fight, um, I do think Povetkin could wear him down to the body and he could get a stoppage or or a, a one-sided points decision because, I mean, Bermain Stavern isn't easy to stop. He's been stopped before, but that was more a, a premature stoppage. You know, he's, he's a guy who... Like, you know, he will go out on his shield if he has to. He, he is a tough guy and he's got a decent chin. I mean, to put um, Stavern's chin into perspective, Stavern is the only fighter that has gone the distance with Deontay Wilder. So, you know, we, we know that Deontay Wilder is a monstrous puncher. Okay, anybody that's fought him will, will concede to that. So, uh, yeah, you know, I think that Stavern certainly does have a tough chin on him. 
I think Wilder hits harder than Povetkin personally. I, I honestly, I think Wilder hits much harder than Povetkin. So, um, you know, but but Povetkin, don't get me wrong, he can get the stoppage, and the reason why he can is because of pressure. I think Povetkin can get to the body of Stavern, and I think that it's body shots that are the key to stopping a fighter like Stavern, because then you'll be able to drop his hands and take away his stamina. So. I think that's what Povetkin definitely needs to do here. He needs to take out the body, focus on that early on. Uh, what what Verne needs to do is obviously maintain distance and uh, try and um, time Povetkin on the way in. Like sometimes Povetkin likes to lead off with a left hook. Try and maybe take a little half step back and then counter over the top with a right hand uh, like Marco Hook was able to do at times. And then when Povetkin bends at the waist and ducks low to try and avoid shots, you know, shorten the punches inside and throw some uppercuts to the body. That's what Stavern will have to do. But Stavern will have to maintain distance. You know, he can't allow Povetkin to get up on his chest and smother him. Because if he does that, Povetkin is going to really take, you know, he's, he's going to really take away Stavern's best um, attributes, which is power from the outside. So, yeah, that's how I see this fight. I think it's a very good matchup, a very intriguing fight. Um, I think that Bermain Stavern has a chance, but I, w I will be picking Povetkin. I'm going to pick Povetkin in this fight by a late stoppage. Now, a decision is certainly possible, okay? A decision is possible because, like I said, Stavern is durable. He can go the distance. Uh, he's got a good chin. But I think, from what I've seen in training, I think that Povetkin, if he, if he applies the right kind of game plan in this fight, the right strategy, I see no reason why he can't take Stavern out to the body and really wear him down and get the stoppage. So, yeah, I'm going to go with... Povetkin by a late stoppage. Uh, the fight's going to be in Russia, for those of you who don't know. So, yeah, Povetkin's going to have huge support in the crowd. Um, you know, he, he's going to be the uh, you know, he's going to be the home fighter, basically. You know, Stavern's travelling for this fight. Povetkin's got the home support. So, you know, um, that might give Povetkin a psychological edge in there. You know, it, it, I know it certainly helps a lot of fighters to have a home advantage. So, yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm picking Povetkin by a late stoppage, perhaps a decision. Uh, thanks for watching.